Welcome to another lecture in our lecture series on design of steel moment frame resistant building. Today we will look at the design of moment connection that is the connection between beam and column. So before starting with the manual design let me go through one short presentation that I have prepared for this lecture. In the diagram here, you can see the type of connection that we will be designing today. Here you can see an I-section column is attached to an I-section beam using a plate and that plate is connected using some bolts here. So this is the moment type connection or moment end plate connection whose design we will be learning today. So these moment connections are used to transmit all the forces that is both shear forces and bending moment from the beam to the column. And since the moments are also transferred, these are often referred to as rigid connections. So these rigid connections do not permit any relative movement between these two elements, that is the beam and column. So how do we fabricate this type of connection and field? First, this beam is connected to this end plate, which is a plate of certain thickness, length and width. This plate is connected to this beam in fact it is welded and this welding takes place in the shop or factory itself then that welded part that means now we have this end plate and the beam connected together that welded part is brought to the site and then it is connected to our columns using these bolts here so the welding is performed in the factory or shop and the bolting is performed in the field So in this end plate connection, generally we have two types. One is the flush end plate. In that flush end plate, this end plate do not extend beyond the upper and lower flanges of the beam. That means the end of this end plate is in flush with the flanges of this beam. However, if this end plate is extended beyond the upper and lower flanges, then we term the connection as extended end plate connection. And these extended end plate connection may be connected using different number of bolts. For example, you can see here four bolt in both of these diagrams and eight bolt in this diagram. Sometimes these stiffeners may also be used and the use of these stiffeners may help in reducing the required thickness of this end plate. So there are different advantages and disadvantages of this end plate connection. Let me now go through this. Instead, let me go through now, start with the Excel sheet that I have prepared for the design of this end plate. So let me just close this and then go to our Excel sheet here. This Excel sheet that I have prepared is more of an analysis type of Excel sheet instead of a design type. That means I have selected a certain number of bolts and a certain length and breadth of end plate that we will be using to connect our beam and column and we will see if that number of bolts and that end plate will be sufficient here i have done this because generally in two or three story building i know that this much amount of bolt and this end plate will be sufficient if possible in any one of our uh, future lectures we will go through the design steps as well this excel sheet also is very close to the design excel sheet however that won't uh, matter much for now we will just go through this excel sheet and see the design steps here so let's see some data here our column section is 2 ismc 300 and our beam section is ismb 250 so this moment and shear force that is coming onto our connection here how can we get these values from e tabs for that open your e tabs model after that analysis is complete go to display and show tables and under this analysis results go to element output frame output and then element forces for our beams and then click on ok please wait for a while while this table is being populated here this table will give us the values of axial force shear forces v2 and v3 and bending moment em3 for our beams here so our table is displayed now. I will directly go to this column V3 here. 
sorry i'll go to this m3 column here let me just right click on this m3 and then click on this sort ascending you will see that the maximum value of moment is minus 80.89 and if you go for sort descending you will see that the positive maximum value is 58.12 so we will take this moment with the highest absolute value that is 80.8933 so this will be our required moment 80.8933 kilonewton meter and the shear force corresponding to this moment if you see shear force v3 is 0 axial force p is 0 since this is a beam member and then shear force v2 is 90.2717 so we will take these two values here moment 80.8933 kilonewton meter shear force v2 90.2717 kilonewton shear force v3 is 0 axial force p is 0 so let us suppose that we will be currently using the bolts of diameter 20 mm our width of end plate will be 230 mm and our length of end plate will be 400 mm our number of rows of bolt is 4 and the number of bolts in each row is 2 mm so let me just draw a diagram to represent this for example if you take that this is our column section here or you are looking at the side view of our column here this is the width of our column which is 300 mm in one side and 250 mm in another side so remember that and here we will be using okay let me draw this again so this is the face of our column and this is the end plate that we will be using so we have supposed here that the width of end plate is 230 and length is 400 mm that means this is 230 and this is 400 mm and this is our i section beam that is ismb 200 that we will be using to connect with this column here and our bolt we will be using eight number of bolts four in this side and four in the other side here so let me suppose that the distance between the center of this bolt and this edge of end plate is 50 mm and also the center of this bolt and another end of edge plate this will again be 50 mm then the distance between this edge of this center of bolt and this center of bolt will be let us suppose for now let me see how much i have taken here 83 mm 83 mm and again this will also be 83 mm and since the total length of our end plate is 400 mm this middle distance will be 134 mm you can calculate this by doing 400 minus 2 times 50 minus 2 times 83 you will get this to be 134 mm so now this beam will be attached to this end plate by welding here these sections all will be welded and then this welded end plate and this beam will be connected to our column by bolting of these eight bolts so this is our connection that we will be designing so here are some beam details for ismb 250 beam the total depth of beam is 250 mm that means the total depth of this beam from here to this edge will be 250 mm the flange width is 12 125 mm that means this is the flange width thickness of flange 12.5 mm thickness of wave 6.9 mm clear depth of wave is given as the total depth minus the two times thickness of flange so 250 minus two times 12 of 12.5 gives you 225 mm area of section 47.5 centimeter square 
and the yield strength is 250 newton per mm square and the ultimate tensile strength is 410 newton per millimeter square since we are using fe 250 grade steel so these values you can get from any standard is code or any standard textbook so these are our beam details now i will go through the steps that i have prepared in this excel sheet one by one let's check for tension in top or bottom flange the tension is given by this formula here m3 that means the moment that is coming on our connection 80.8933 divided by the total depth minus the thickness of flange you will get our moment to be 340.6 kN. Now, let's find the tension capacity of the flange. This is the actual tension that is coming onto our flange, whereas our tension capacity is given by the gross area into yield stress divided by 1.1. So, how do we find gross area? D17 into D18, that means flange width into thickness of flange. And then Fy will be 250. You will get the tension capacity to be 355.11 kN. So this tension capacity is greater than the tension coming onto our flange. So it's okay. The flange is safe. Similarly, the shear area of the CR shear capacity of the flange is given by this formula. This is similar to the tension capacity, except that in the denominator there is an additional square root 3 formula. So if you perform the same calculation is for tension capacity and divide by root 3 you will get to be 205.02 now calculate this t by td plus v by vd that means tension by tension capacity plus shear by shear capacity our shear that is coming we will take as zero since we have v3 at zero here so v by vd will be zero and then remaining t by td that means 340.6 by 355.11 you get to be 0.95 since this value is less than 1, it is safe. So here yeah, it is safe. Now after checking for tension in top or bottom flange, let's go to the evaluation of weld size at flanges and wave. Since we are using weld to connect the end plate with our beam section, we have to check for the size and capacity of our weld also. First, let's determine the weld size around flange. That means in this section here here and here so the length of weld available in flange is given by two times flange width minus thickness of wave this flange width and thickness of wave is the property of our beam that we have given here find the value and perform this calculation you get the length of weld available in flange to be 243.1 mm now the design strength of our fillet weld let us first consider if the fillet weld will be sufficient to be used in the flanges. This clause 10.5.7.1.1 of IS code 800 gives us the design strength of fillet weld and that is FWN by gamma MW. FWN means FU by root over 3. FU is the smaller of the ultimate stress of the weld or of the parent metal and gamma MW is the partial safety factor. So this gamma MW if this welding is performed in the shop or factory itself the partial safety factor is taken as 1.25 and if the weld is performed at the field then we use a higher safety factor that is 1.50 and this value of u of u here we will suppose that the parent metal and the structural steel sorry the weld material and the structural steel which is the parent metal they are composed of the same material so the value of of u will be 410 that means this ultimate tensile strength so now use this formula to calculate the design strength of both soft fillet weld and filled fillet weld so this here this soft fillet weld design strength is calculated as 410 divided by root 3 into 1.25 whereas for filled fillet weld 410 divided by root 3 into 1.50 so the design strength of soft fillet weld will obviously be greater since the partial safety factor is low. Now use the greater value of design strength here. Since we will consider that our welding is performed in the shop itself, we will use this design strength 189.37.
Now the force per millimeter length that is coming onto our weld will be this design strength divided by the length of weld available that is 243.1. So 243.1 divided by 189.37 you get to be 1.4 kilonewton per millimeter. So this is the so I think I have used this formula incorrectly. Uh, let me see. Force per millimeter length is given by okay. Force per millimeter length is given by not this length of weld divided by design strength, but design strength divided by length of weld. So design strength is 189.37 divided by 243.1 is 0.77. Okay, this is the force per millimeter length that is coming onto our welding between the flanges and the end plate. Now let us suppose that the size of fillet weld that we will be using is 10 mm and let's find the strength of his 10 mm weld which is given by 0 0.707 into the size of weld into the design of the soft fillet weld that is the design strength so 10 into 0. Point, sorry 10 into first 0 0.707 into 10 into 189.37 gives you 1.33 kilonewton per meter so we can see that the force per millimeter length is lesser than the strength of our weld so this 10 mm strength or 10 mm size fillet weld is sufficient. So we will provide 10 mm fillet weld size for the beam flanges. So in case if our weld strength comes out to be less than the force coming onto our weld, we will provide full penetration butt weld. Generally, we don't want to use the weld size greater than 10 mm. So instead of the fillet weld, if this size of fillet weld is not sufficient, we will be using full penetration butt weld. But here, the weld strength is okay, so we will be providing 10 mm fillet weld for the beam flanges. Similarly, for the weld size around wave, first let us find the resultant shear. This resultant shear is given by the square root of summation of square of V2 and V3. That means V2 square plus V3 square whole square root. So since this is zero, our resultant shear will be this much, 90.27 itself. The length of weld available. Now for this weld around wave, the length of weld available is given by this formula. Two times the total depth of beam minus four times the thickness of flange. You get this to be 400 mm. And now the force per millimeter length will be given by this resultant shear, which is 90.27 divided by 400. So the force per millimeter length comes out to be 0.22 kilonewton per meter or per millimeter. Now for this, let us suppose the size of fillet weld is 8 mm and using the same formula as here, let us find the weld capacity. This comes out to be 424.18 kilonewton. Now since this weld capacity is very much larger as compared to our resultant shear, the weld size is adequate or enough. So we will be using 8 mm fillet weld to the wave. So it's your work to optimize this size of weld also here. You can see that capacity is very much greater as compared to the actual force coming onto our wave. So it's your work to optimize. I will just describe the steps that you have to follow and then it is your job to optimize and then find the required size here. So now our weld size is determined. 10 mm fillet weld for the beam flanges and 8 mm fillet weld to the wave. Now let us go to the bolting that should be performed. So to determine the size and number of bolts required, let us see here. First, let's deal with the tension capacity of the bolt. Remember the diameter of bolts that we will be using is 20 mm. The grade of bolt is 8.8 .8 mm. I have described about this grade of bolts in our previous lecture also. What does this mean? In our previous lecture, we used a 4.6 grade bolt. From that, I taught you how to determine the yield strength and ultimate tensile strength. 
Now the whole diameter will be 20 plus 2 mm, that is 22 mm. And the yield strength of the bolt material will be 8.8. So yield strength of the bolt material for this 8.8 .8 grade bolt will be 660 Newton per mm square and for the same material ultimate tensile strength will be 830 Newton per mm square. You see that I have extracted a table relating tensile properties of bolts in steel connection and this is most probably taken from this code here IS 1367 part 3 specifications of fasteners threaded steel for technical supply conditions and for 8.8 .8 grade steel if you see here for diameter greater than 16 mm the yield stress is 660 megapascals and ultimate tensile stress is 830 and we have used the same data here the s distance we will take as 50 meter s distance means the distance from the center of bolt to the edge of the end plate and the gauze we will take is 130 mm now the net area of bolt is given by this formula here that is generally we take it 0.78 into pi by 4 d square d means the diameter of bolt which is 20 mm square the net area bolt comes out to be 245.04 which is millimeter square now let us suppose the number of bolts we will be using is 8 and the number of vertical lines of bolt is 2 if you see in this diagram here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 bolts and the two lines of bolt two vertical lines so if you consider this the tension on each bolt comes out to be 85.15 kN. that means you have to divide this tension that we got here 340.6 kN divided by 8 over 2 that means 4 so 360 divided by 4 this almost comes out to be 85.15 kN. this is the tension on each bolt now the nominal tensile strength of HSFG bolts that means high strength friction grip bolts that we will be using here this is given in clause 10.3.5 page 76 of IS 800. The nominal tensile strength is given by this formula here 0 0.9 FUB into A and B. We will see what these symbols represent and this nominal tensile strength should be less than or equal to FYB into ASB into gamma M1 by gamma M0. So first let's see here FUB means the ultimate tensile strength of bolt which is 830 megapascal as we have seen above. ANB this is the net tensile area of bolt which we calculated above 0.78 into pi by 4 d square. FYB is the ultimate yield stress of bolt not ultimate yield stress of bolt which comes out to be 660 newton per mm square asb is the sank area of bolt which is calculated as pi by 4 d square d is the diameter of bolt we don't for this net tensile stress area we do 0 0.78 pi by 4 d square but for sank area only pi by 4 d square gamma m1 is the partial safety factor of material resistance governed by ultimate stress 1.15 gamma m0 or m0 is the partial safety factor for material resistance governed by yield 1.1 and after finding this net the nominal tensile strength we should always make sure that the factor design tensile force that is the tensile force that is coming onto our bolts should be at least less than or equal to at least equal to that means the maximum value can be the maximum value of our tensile force can be this T and F by gamma MF. Gamma MF is the partial safety factor for the material of bolt which is 1.25 or it should be less than this value here. So let's see here. First let's calculate 0 0.9 FUB into A and B. This we get to be 183.04 kN and FYB into ASB into gamma M1 by gamma M0 this value which comes out to be 218.07 kN. So, since this 183 is less than 218, it's okay here, as given from this codal formula. And finally, the factor design tensile force is given by 
dividing this value 183.04 by the partial safety factor gamma mf 1.25 is given in this formula here tdf is tnf by gamma mf it comes out to be 146.43 kN. hence this factor design tensile force is the design tension capacity of bolt 146.43 kN. now if you compare the tension capacity of bolt with the tensile force that is coming onto our bolt you can see that the tensile force that is coming onto our bolt is 85.15 kN, whereas the tension capacity of bolt is 146.43 kN. Since this tension capacity is greater than the tensile force, the bolt are safe in tension. That means safe in tension capacity. Similarly, let's check for shear capacity of bolt. The shear force in each bolt is given by the resultant shear divided by the number of bolts. The resultant shear we have obtained here 90.27 kN and then the number of the number of bolts we have obtained here. Let us see here the number of bolts is 8 in total. So the shear force coming in each bolt is 11.28 kN. The partial safety factor for resistance of section for bearing type bolts is given by 1.25 and then this shear capacity of bolt is calculated using this formula here given in 10.3.3 of is code we are you use this formula and then calculate the shear capacity of bolt the shear capacity of bolt comes out to be 93.93 which is greater than the actual shear force coming since the strength is greater than the force that means the capacity is greater than the demand the bolt is safe in shear also here to calculate the shear capacity of bolt you have to calculate the nominal shear capacity of bolt and then divide it by the partial safety factor the nominal shear capacity is calculated using this formula here yamu by root over 3 yamu means the ultimate tensile strength of bolt which is given here Eight hundred thirty newton per mm square, and then we take this value of yon yon. Yon yon means the number of shear planes with threads intersecting the shear plane is one, and then A and B we have already calculated here, and then we take the value of yon s to be zero, and then divide whole of this value by root three. This is the shear capacity of bolt. And since this capacity is greater than the demand, the bolt are safe in shear also. And finally, we have to check for the bearing capacity of bolt. The bearing capacity of bolt can be calculated using this codal provision 10.3.4. There are just some values to be calculated. You can get these values from your design data or from the standard values also. For example, we have here end distance of the bolt along bearing distance e is 50 mm we have taken it to be 50 mm diameter of the hole is 22 mm pitch distance of the bolt along bearing direction is 83 mm this means this distance here from here to here 83 mm and the ultimate tensile stress of the plate is 410 mm now you have to calculate e by 3 do let's see in the formula here the formula for the bearing capacity is given by 2.5 kv dt of u so kv is smaller of these four values here e by 3 d naught p by 3 d naught minus 0 0.25 f u v by f u or 1 you have to take the minimum value and then d is the nominal diameter of the bolt and t and f u and you have to use this formula to calculate the value of nominal bearing strength of bolt so first let's see kv means the minimum of these four values here sorry okay these three values and then one so the minimum value comes out to be 0 0.75 the thickness of end plate let us suppose now is 12 mm and the thickness of column flange for the iscmc 250 section we get is 12.50 mm so the value of this t here 2.5 kb dt of you this t here is taken as the minimum of these two values either 12 or 12.50 the smaller value is 12 so t value will take as 12 and then finally calculate the bearing capacity of bolt that means 2.5 into kv that we have calculated here into 
d is the diameter of bolt which is 20 mm into t which is 12 mm and then f u f u value which is 410 mm we get this bearing capacity to be 184.5 kN. now since this bearing capacity is greater than the shear force very much greater we can say that our bolts are now again safe in bearing capacity now we have checked for the tension capacity shear capacity and bearing capacity of bolt now let us look at this prying effect here this prying effect i want to go into much detail here but i will just want to tell about what is prying effect this prying effect generate because although we say that our connection is rigid here there is definitely some flexibility that is present in our connections so there are two things that causes the prying effect one is the flexibility of our connections and another is the tension that is coming onto our bolts so let us see one diagram here let us say that this plate is connected to this t element using one bolt here and one bolt here so if we apply a tension force of 2t in this upper direction in this element then this bolt will be experiencing a tension force of t and this bolt will be experiencing a tension force of t so if our connection is rigid then the forces that is coming onto our bolts will only be t t here but what happens is that when these bolts are subjected to tension forces and because of the flexibility of our connection generally what happens is that in this section here in the middle these two elements this t element and this plate element start to lose contact with each other whereas more pressure will be generated in this section here for example what generally happens is because of the flexibility of our connection now somewhat this gap is created here is these two elements start to lose contact so this gap is created here and because of the creation of this gap here additional forces will be generated in our bolts that we have used to connect these two elements and that additional force that is generated is generally termed as prying effect and that force is termed as prying force so to check for a prying force you can go to this clause here 10.4.7 gives us the formula for the prying force here so you look at this formula yourself and calculate the value of the prying force here what we have got is that the prying force value comes out to be negative minus 6.64 so this means that the prying force is not present in our connection there because of our type of connection that we have used the prying force is not present or you can say that the prying force is negligible so we i have considered here that the prying force value q value is zero here so i am not going through the steps here remember you have to check for prying force in your connection also but i am not going in detail for this prying force you just go to this codal formula here and use the necessary value to be obtain the magnitude of prying force instead i will now directly go to check for bolt subject to combine shear and tension this is given in clause 10.3.6 these values the value of this formula that is vsb by vdv vsb means the factored shear force divided by the designed shear capacity squared plus the factor tensile force divided by the design tension capacity squared should be either less than or equal to 1 as yes, we have already calculated the value of all these here you can see that so this is our shear force and this is our shear capacity so 11.28 divided by 93.93 whole squared plus this is our tension capacity and this is our tension force plus 85.15 divided by 146.43 squared if you do this you will get the value to be 0.35 since this is less than or equal to 1 the check is okay now finally we will come to the determining the thickness of our end plate we already considered some length and width of our end plate at the beginning now let us check for the thickness of our end plate so let's see here 
the distance between the bolt center to the flange edge of the beam is 18.75 mm how did we get this we got this by using this formula here this distance means let me draw another diagram here if this is our beam that is connected here and this is our bolt here i have just drawn this part here i have magnified this part here then the distance from this center of this bolt to the edge of our flange that means this is we know that the distance between the center of this flange and then center of this bolt is 25 mm so if you do 25 mm minus two times the thickness of the edge you get this distance from bolt center to the flanges which is 18.75 mm the tension on each bolt we calculated above 85.15 mm so let's calculate the moment as the edge of the flange considering the cantilever action on end plate the moment at the edge of the flange is 1.5965 so how did we get this let me see the formula that i've used here i167 into i166 that means the tension in each bolt multiplied by the distance between the bolt center to the flanges which is 18.75 i divided it by 1000 to get the value in kilonewton minus this year the value of this le that we have calculated for calculation of prime force into prime force value now we have to subtract the value of this prime force here but since we got the value of prime force to be zero this second term is not needed so the moment at the edge of the flange is given by just this l naught into te which comes out to be 1.59 kilonewton meter and then using this moment you can calculate the value of the thickness of plate which is given by this formula here 4 into the formula for this thickness of end plate is given as root over 4 into the moment that we calculated here divided by Fy which is 250 divided by the partial safety factor 1.1 into L20 into 2 that means L20 is this value here 83 83 means the distance between these two bolts here we get that formula to get the value of thickness of plate to be 13.01 mm you can see any standard textbook to find the thickness of plate using the moment that we have calculated here that is given in every textbook so thickness of plate is, comes out to be 13.01 mm just around it up to a nearer higher value so you can use a thickness plate of 14 mm or 15 mm here i have taken is 14 mm now finally let's check for the gross shear capacity of plate the gross shear area is comes out to be 9548 millimeter square now this gross shear area is calculated as this whole area for example and let me go to my diagram if this is the i beam that we are that we are connecting to our column section just find the perimeter of this beam here and then multiply this perimeter by the thickness of our end plate that we will be using let's see here how we have calculated the gross area so this 50 plus 2 times 83 since we have used here 2 times 83 and then plus d16 which is the total depth and then again for the another side plus 2 times 83 plus 50 so use this formula here for example let me see again how we have calculated l18 means this 50 plus 2 times l20 means 2 times 83 plus d16 which is the total left this is our one side of your i-beam and again for another side 
plus 2 times L20 which is 2 times 83 plus 50. This 50 is the distance between the center of this bolt to the edge of your end plate and then 83 is the distance between these two bolts here. In this way you can calculate gross area and then you multiply that perimeter by this end plate thickness which is 14 mm and then the design shear strength of plate is again given by this gross shear area into the yield stress which is 250 divided by root 3 into partial safety factor 1.25 this comes out to be 1102 kilonewton now since this design shear strength is greater than the shear force which is 11.28 then we can say that the shear capacity of plate is for given diagram that is for our given connection type and for given end plate thickness the shear capacity of plate is also okay now finally this is the summary of our design we will use 14 mm thick end plate of size 450 mm by 230 mm we will be using 8 number of 20 mm dia bolts and then we will provide 10 mm fillet weld for the beam flanges and 8 mm fillet weld to the wave. So this is how you connect or how you design for the end plate connection. Beside end plate connection, you may also design other different types of seating connections also. But generally, this is the common type of connection that will be used to connect for beam and columns. So this brings us to the end of our today's lecture video. We will meet again soon in our next video and we will continue with the design of another element. So see you again soon. Thank you.